This is the Calm Marker Omni One. It's all new, and you might look at it and think this is a fantastic looking fiber laser, but guess what? This isn't a fiber laser. This is actually a five watt UV laser, and that means it'll mark just about anything, including this. Untreated glass, you can just plunk it down and do some engraving. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at all of this and more, so let's get going. Hey, it's Steve. Now I'm just gonna jump right in here and start talking about this Calm Marker Omni One. This is a UV laser. It's a little different than you're probably used to, uh, but they are starting to make a, a, a bit of an emergence in the home market and, and we'll say small business. They aren't cheap, so they're not gonna compete with your diode laser, but uh, but they're, they're, they're starting to come on strong. Now the particular laser I have, this Omni One is a five watt laser and uh, it runs at 355 nanometers. Now, before you scoff and say, well, five watts is nothing, uh, this laser, because it runs at such a short wavelength, you've got all of that five watts of power in a very small package. So this laser is actually comparable on engraving to about a 20, maybe a 30 watt fiber laser. And that's pretty significant given that it looks, you know, like such a small number here. Uh, there's two workspace sizes here uh, because Commarker provides two field lenses for this laser. And the first one is 75 by 75 millimeters. That will give you higher energy in that area. So uh, you'll be able to basically engrave a little faster. It's also going to have a little finer detail because it's a smaller lens. There's also the 150 millimeter square uh, workspace uh, with the other field lens. That's the one I typically use and it's it's very capable. Uh, so unless you're doing something, you know, very specific where you want super fine detail, uh, you're probably not going to use the 75 all that often. Now, just a quick flyover. I'm not going to do a whole lot here. The front panel is pretty basic. It's got an e-stop switch, uh, a power switch, uh, just simple on, 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 off, and then two switches on the right hand side to, to move up and down the, the actual laser module and it sits up on top of, a, of a, a tower and those switches will do it. You can also uh, look around to the back and there's a power cable, uh, a cable that runs power up to the, to the tower. If you have an enclosure, you can plug it in there. Uh, 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 there's a pedal if you're doing volume and of course a rotary and then the USB connector. So all in all, pretty simple configuration here. It's probably as easy to set up as, as your diode laser if you have one. Now I did mention the interchangeable lenses here and these field lenses are fairly robust. They're fairly hefty. And when you wanna just change them, you can just unscrew the lens that's up in the laser head and screw in a new one. Then you have to focus. Now, when you first start here, you, you have to do this measurement from the bottom of that sticky label. There's a number written on that label, which tells you the physical focus that was measured in the factory. And then you can use that uh, to make sure those two red dots on the workspace come together. There's also a manual focus up on top if you would rather do that. Uh, if you're going larger distances, though, you probably want to use the power. Now, with all that behind us, I left one particular item off the discussion here uh, with the specifications, and that was the beam size. And, and you saw it there, uh, it was 0 0.0019 millimeters, which is incredibly small. And just to give you a, a, an idea of where this laser fits in, in the world of, of, we'll say, beam sizes, uh, I put a, together a little table here. I brought it up on screen. And if you look at a CO2 laser, a typical CO2 laser will be anywhere from 0 0.2, 0 0.3 up to a millimeter. Uh, moving, I'll, I'll say, down the scale to smaller beams, your typical diode laser, if it's an old 5 watt, it'll be about 0 0.06. But modern day diode lasers are about 0.1 to 0 0.15 millimeter square. The Fiber lasers are, again, smaller, 0.05 to about 0.1. They typically lean towards the lower end of that number, but, but they can be a bit larger, but they're still way smaller than a diode laser. And then finally you get to a UV laser and this Omni 1 at 0 0.0019, we'll say 0 0.002 millimeters. That is tiny. And what that really means is you get a whole lot more definition, a whole lot more precision when you're engraving. And to give you an idea, I just engraved a, a metal business card here and I put a text table at the top. Now the height of the letter T is the size that's, that's measured there. And you can see that 0.3 millimeter text. 
when you look at this card with your own eye, this thing is very, barely visible, but you can see under a microscope, this is actually really clear. So you can get fantastic precision with this laser. So once the laser's plugged in, you need to get light burn set up, and that's generally pretty similar to any other method. You can go in and find my laser, and it goes off and does a scan of all your USB ports, and I'll skip past that. It, it finds the laser, and you can just select that. Now you do have to import a, a, a different driver here, and you'll find it on the USB stick that comes with the with the laser. So down in the plug-in folder, you you want that 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 con configuration seven file, and then set the the workspace size to whatever lens you're going to use. You might want to create a second one of these for the 75 millimeter for using the 150. And once you get it all configured, you hit OK. And you can see it there. If I select it, uh, I can bring up the machine settings. Now you also have to load this core file and you'll also find that on the USB stick. It's in a different folder, but you'll find it. And what it does is sets up the, the values in this dialog uh, to something correct. Now there's one other thing you should do, which is calibrate your your laser because there could be lens distortion and you wanna make sure that light burn is compensating for that. And this is just a wizard, I'm not gonna show it to you, but you you can just create a uh, an engraving and then you can measure what the, what the, the sh it draws a bunch of squares on a page and you can measure what they're supposed to be versus what they actually are and then you create this compensation file. So make sure you do that as well if you have one of these lasers. Now, I didn't want to turn this into a Lightburn tutorial, but there's a couple of things I need to show you in Lightburn just so you can kind of get an understanding for how things work. And I just loaded a, a, an owl image in here and I'm going to go look at the settings. Now, the first thing you're going to notice is all the power settings are disabled. And that's because you don't set power for a UV laser. All of the, the we'll say, darkness of the image is controlled by the speed by the frequency and by this mystery field called the Q pulse. Now, I typically leave the Q pulse at one, although you don't have to. Uh, and then the frequency is, is in a range from uh, one to I think 30 is the maximum. So between those really two things, the speed and the frequency, you can get a good engraving. And then the last thing you will also want to do is play with the interval. Again, uh, intervals that are really dense, let's say a very fine interval, 0 0.001, will generate lines that are very close together. So the image will be naturally darker than, say, if it's 0.5. So keep that in mind as well. Uh, there's a lot of knobs to turn here, but if you run some material tests, you can handle this. Now, for this particular image, it's really just black and white. So I'm going to use threshold for this. I will point out that you can't do grayscale with a with a UV laser, and that's because you don't have that power to adjust. So uh, you generally want to select a threshold if it's black and white, or if it is a grayscale type image, you can pick one of the dither formats like Jarvis, and that works very well. Keep in mind that the the beam is so small here that that Jarvis looks like grayscale anyway. So uh, so that's not too bad. Now. Uh, I'll pick uh, for settings here. I'll go fairly slow. I'm going to go about 100 millimeters a second. And you can see the 30 uh, hertz of frequency, kilohertz of frequency. And I'll just resize this so it's not too big. It won't take too long. Now, I'm not going to show you the whole engrave here, but I'll, I'll show you the framing. You can see what framing looks like. So that's where the owl will be. And I'll drop a piece of material down there and I'll show you the last maybe five seconds of this. And uh, you can see it engraving the owl. It's nice and dark. And at the end of that, it, it just leaves, a, it goes back to framing mode, basically. So you'll see the outline around the owl. So that's a sample. Now, I'm not going to show you really light burn again, specifically for a lot of these, but I am going to show you a lot of material samples for the, for the remainder of, of the video here, just so you can get a feel for all of the materials that this laser can handle, as well as uh, what quality you can get, what precision you can get with any of these engravings. And you'll see this owl pop up here again in a second because I did a, a much larger one uh, uh, as a materials test.
with everything set up and ready to go, I did a bunch of material testing here. So I just did a whole bunch of engraves, starting with common things like wood and acrylic. And they came out well, metal business cards. Uh, this photo looks amazing and I'll show it to you. This is cardstock. And that's something you can't do with a fiber laser. Stainless steel is a, is you know easy. I even did a material test here, varying frequency with interval, and you can see that you can get color and that cork coasters. I did a bunch of other things as well. And pretty much everything I did just came out really, really great. Uh, here's the owl in, in a little more detail uh, on standard hardware store plywood. I engraved a pencil, which is by far my preferred method of doing this. And you can see the result uh, just looks fantastic. Then I did the dog on the stainless steel plate. Came out pretty nice. I could have done it a little darker. Uh, Audrey Hepburn on paper. This is standard cardstock. It came out great. And of course, metal cards look amazing when you do an image on them. And uh, I did uh, an AI generated Santa here just to make a Christmas decoration on glass. Uh, slate coasters are, are super simple. And then I tried a couple of weird things like felt. If you want to do uh, maybe mark a book bag or mark some kind of cloth. And then just for a real blast, I did this dog on a leaf. And I thought that was kind of cool. So in the end, there's very few materials that this Calm Marker Omni 1 can't engrave and do a fantastic job. Uh, what was really nice for me was in Lightburn, uh, even though there were a lot of options in the settings window to play around with here, I generally, for all of these tests, left the Q-Pulse set to one nanosecond and the frequency set to 30 kilohertz, and then just varied the speed and the, and the interval to get the effectively the color that I wanted. So it turned out once you kind of get settled in here, this is really easy to use. So I took this one step further and I did an actual real customer project. I had a couple of hundred keychains to make and I threw them on here five at a time. I actually flipped them over and did the other side as well. But the total engrave time for each tag that I did was about a minute. So very fast and certainly very easy. Now that's a good segue to talk about things I think Commarker did really well here on the Omni One and maybe a couple of things that I was concerned about, although I'm not sure Commarker can do much about these. On the pro side, the material versatility here is amazing. You really don't have to think about whether your laser can engrave something or not. It most likely will. Uh, and along with that, you get very high precision with that small beam. Everything you engrave is gonna be amazingly accurate and crisp. And in addition to that, it's also not going to generate any heat. So you don't have to worry about protecting, heat protecting something, and you won't get smoke off of something. That owl I engraved, if it was for a customer uh, on a piece of plywood, I could have literally pulled it off the laser and shipped it. There was no cleanup whatsoever. Now, if you're doing other kinds of materials, the engraving here is permanent. So on glass or stainless steel, where... You might have tried glass with a diode laser or stainless steel with a CO2 laser. Uh, you can literally take a sharp uh, tool of some sort after the engraving is done and scrape that engraving off. Not the case here. Everything is permanent and glass in particular looks like it was sandblasted. So it's by far the best way to engrave glass. Now on the con side, and again, I mentioned there's probably not a lot con marker can do. The form factor of this laser is quite big considering the maximum engraving area of 150 by 150 millimeters. You're going to lay down a piece of material that size and you're going to wonder what the rest of that work area is for. Uh, so maybe they could have stacked things up inside a little better to make the form factor a bit smaller. It's also very tall, so you're going to have to make sure that you have the height to put this on a workbench. Uh, I actually have, uh, it's actually hitting one of my cupboards, so I have to find a better place for it in my shop. But the height is a, is a, is a challenge as well. And finally here, the price, I don't think this laser is overpriced by any means. I think considering what you get, you will pay this laser off pretty quickly if you have a business or a side hustle. But if you're just getting going, dropping say $4,000, $4,500 on a, on a laser could be pretty intimidating. But like I said, I think if you had the business, you're going to pay for this pretty quickly. If you're in the market for, for this laser and maybe you're, you're bouncing around ideas, maybe you want to consider a fiber laser. Commarker also has a big family of fiber lasers. 
and I reviewed the com marker before a while ago. So if you're interested, go click that link up above and go watch that and really do a comparison. You'll see the difference in, uh, I'll say engraving quality, speed, size, all the typical things you'd be concerned about if you're trying to make this choice. And uh, I'll say get out there, make your world, and I'll see you next time.